Hello all, just going to have a quick look at this uh, oscilloscope, uh, I've had this for a while now and it's uh, starting to play up, um, when you turn it on the trace drops away uh, and then other times when you turn it on there will be a trace diagonally across or various different positions, um, now it's uh, quite an old one this, we just have a look around the uh, side here, just bring the light so we can see. Have a look inside as you can see it's quite uh, quite old inside it's got old resistors and capacitors and it's uh, got valves and things to operate it so let's put that light somewhere so we can see what we're doing there we go um, yeah so it's got these valves and things on it which um, I, I haven't got a valve tester but they're all lighting up and working but I suspect that the problem is with it is that these capacitors down here, I don't know if you can see that one there, that the old paper capacitors with uh, wax on them. And I think they're going to need replacing. And there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, possibly on here that I'm going to have to um, see if I can source a replacement for and try that. Um, I haven't got an ESR meter anymore to um, to test the capacitors. A bit of an accident with that and dropped it and smashed the bloody thing. So we're going to have a look, see if we can um, see if we can get this going again. If not, I'm thinking of building a um, an oscilloscope of uh, from an open source hardware thing that I found the other day. Mm. So we'll, we'll have a look at that now. I'll just change over to the uh, to the camera on the monitor, and we'll have a quick look at that. Okay. This is the unit that I'm thinking of making if we can't get this one going. Um, now this is a two channel oscilloscope and it looks as though it's been built in a, a PC power supply case. Um, so it's fairly compact. Um, now this is a microcontroller unit with, um, as I said, two channels. Uh, it's got a digital to analog converter and a trigger circuit as well incorporated in it. Um, and if you look further down the page, it's got all the specs there. It's a one kilohertz maximum, yeah, one kilohertz sample rate maximum, uh, equivalent to minimal sample rate of five megahertz. Um, so for general purpose stuff, that ain't too bad. Um, he's also got the download links here for the uh, the PPMA scope for Win, um, which is the the program. Just let me just show you this, which is this program here, which I'm, I think he may have wrote himself, um, coded it in C um, in Windows, and. As I say, these are the download links. There's the, uh, the data sheet you can download. Um, there's other board layouts as well. The board layouts have already been done, so you could um, print these off, and then you could um, put them onto a copper sheet and then etch the um, the boards, or send them off and have them etched. Uh, but most of the work's already been done here. Now I might uh, make a few modifications to these, just see if we can improve on it a little bit. Um, but what I think I'll do first is actually build the um, the actual board as it is. And it looks like we've got some others here that uh, other people or other ones that he's built. Yeah, I mean they're all they look quite compact, nice, neat, tidy, tidy jobs. Yeah, I think I'm going to have a go at one of these. There's an even smaller one there. That's a nice little uh, compact one. So as you can see by the uh, the pictures, it's uh, 
quite an interesting um, design, quite an interesting little project. So if anybody's interested, the site is um, jonathanweaver.net forward slash ppmscope.html and I'll, uh, I'll post that link in the um, in the description at the bottom there. Uh, there's a few release notes. He's um, done a couple of 12s. Now there's a 2.16 2 build was the 20th of the 8th, 2012. So there's a recent build being done. Uh, corrected some firmware bugs and uh, serial port interfaces, etc. So yeah, so if anybody's interested, the site is um, jonathanweaver.net forward slash ppmscopes.html <laughs> okay so this is um, this is a Taylor 32A oscilloscope um, and some of the capacitors on it are quite bad so I'm going to uh, I'm going to attempt to get um, some replacements of modern capacitors for it, and see if we can replace them all. Now I did have a drawing somewhere for it, um, where I've actually put it. I'm not sure. It's probably in one of the folders somewhere, filed away. Uh, but if not, we're going to have a go at that Jonathan Weaver uh, build, uh, which looks quite interesting. It looks as though it's been built in a uh, PC power supply case. Um, which means it's it's nice and compact, um, unlike this thing here, which, as you can see, is quite a big, old, bulky, weighty old thing. Now, it's been a good good oscilloscope, um, but I did not so long back put it in the shed, and the shed started leaking on it, and it got wet. And I dried it all out, and it was fine again after that. Um, there's a bit of rust on the transformer and things, um, but it was working. But as I say, the tracers. Um, started to drop away on it and then you'll turn it off turn it on and the trace will be somewhere else and you know you just can't you've got no control over where the trace is on the screen so we're going to give that a go so we'll um, we'll probably make some videos on that um stage by stage as we build it um and we'll probably make some more videos on this if we go ahead and replace all the plasters in it um, as i say this is an old uh, valve thing it's a Cathode ray oscilloscope, um, a Taylor model 32A, um, and it's a single. It's only a single trace. This, and no, sorry, it's a double trace. Is this one um, with an amplitude input on it as well? Um, but that that one kilohertz uh, oscilloscope, you know, for for general use uh, and an interesting project to build. So. Keep watching the videos, and if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get updates as and when we put videos up. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.